All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Event Trader here. We're just uh, keeping an eye out on the markets. We've got the S&P rolling around 52.25 since the release of that 10-year bond auction. Um, mixed reviews on it, but didn't seem to disrupt the Apple cart at all. It doesn't seem like too much out there is disrupting that, except, of course, if you are Apple, I suppose, on that. But uh, we're going to bring in, at this point, options trader Brandon Mars, of course, and get his weekly update on what's going on in his neck of the woods. So without any further ado, Brandon, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Gavin? I can't complain. Can't complain. But uh, it's kind of watching these markets here. I know we were just talking a little earlier about how loopy they seem to be today, where you had that quick drop in reaction to CPI, then a rally back. That got erased. We hit a fresh lower low. And right when you thought that we could be getting a nasty reversal breakdown, the bulls came in and ripped us higher yet again, fresh all time highs in the NASDAQ. So uh, that has led to some pretty confusing activity during the day. So hopefully you could help us kind of make heads or tails about it, Brandon. But uh, what, what are you kind of seeing in the markets these days? And, you know, are you leaning in the calls or put camps? Yeah, so like you said, um, I'm watching the NQs right now. Um, you know, the closest out of all the indexes and a nice little uh, blueprint for a roller coaster, uh, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I was I was kind of of the mind frame that you were as far as kind of a potential bullish surprise. Um, you know, when it came in slightly hot, I honestly thought that they were going to take us down a little bit more, you know, maybe take some stocks like a NVIDIA just a little bit lower and then, you know, whip it higher. But um, they came in pretty quick, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, now there's there's a lot of green out there there you know the video five percent microsoft two percent meta two percent i mean there's you know all these these big tech names that uh had a little bit of selling have uh i don't know magically bounced back quite quickly so uh definitely seeing some uh some strength out there and you know i think we've kind of been pulling back here and starting to maybe make a little bit of a, a higher low in the the afternoon session here so you know, it seems like uh, we could maybe run into the uh, the close here. Yeah, I mean, you, you're trying to think of things that could disrupt this market here if you're a bear and um, outside the price action itself, of course. And, you know, that bond auction would have been one of the things that you would think you could hang your hat on. That did not come to fruition. Uh, we've just kind of shaken that off. And again, that CPI report, you know, there's certainly enough ways to break that down to fit into a, a bullish case despite it going a little bit higher so uh really going to be interesting to see what could what could stop us so I, I guess brandon um your expectations kind of going over over the next couple of days and what would raise a red flag for you in the broader market that would you know have you thinking okay that that was a little bit of an odd move that that's catching my attention yeah, I guess what caught my attention is the odd move has already become voided. And that was the NVIDIA move on Friday. Um, you know, I was watching that and, and Meta and, and AMD, my usual names. And, uh, you know, that was a pretty fast and furious move on NVIDIA. And, of course, you got that big bearish engulfing candle. Um, you know, yesterday you had a spinning top, you know, maybe – you know, a spinning top again would be a sign of, of indecision. So it was kind of like, all right, are we going to, you know, go lower or, you know, people thinking that NVIDIA is on, uh, you know, at a discount already and, and we're just going to bounce back. So that was no. kind of what I was watching and, you know, was kind of thinking with just the run we've had and kind of a little bit of the frothiness that, uh, you know, maybe there would have been a little bit more of an unwind there. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm pretty bullish these days, but you just when you get those situations with charts like that and a move like that, the unwind can maybe be a, a little nastier. And we just really haven't seen that at all. Yeah. So now the engulfing pattern that we saw on Friday, that's obviously a bearish 
Uh, well, I mean, they can be bullish, of course, but, uh, you know, that engulfed the price action from Thursday, of course. Uh, the spinning top, you want to explain to us a little bit what that represents to you? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, again, uh, spinning top or like a doji type candle, um, you know, there's a there's a little bit of a difference between the spinning top and the doji with the you know, doji basically having this very similar open and close price the spinning top bodies just a, a little bit bigger yeah again just an indecision candle um you know usually the path of least resistance on those can you know tend to be going with with the current trend um but after a drop like nvidia and a strong name you know you've got that big kind of ugly candle i think it was a 10 percent uh intraday reversal which i think wasn't seen in like 10 years or uh, some some very long number and you know with the fact that you might have maybe seen a little bit more pressure after that the spinning top is kind of you know the, the bulls and the bears fighting if you will and wondering which way to go and yeah i kind of thought they might have taken that that uh you know slightly hot cpi print and maybe taking NVIDIA down to maybe like the 825 area. There's a tiny little gap there. It's kind of where it closed on uh, March 1st. And then I thought we might've seen a bounce, but nope, uh, you know, made a, made a new higher low from, from yesterday even. And I mean, it's pulled back a few points from the highs, but a couple candles here on NVIDIA right now, and we're right back at the highs for the day. And, and again, interestingly enough, that is in the context of a slightly hotter than expected CPI number, um, which I know we talked about probably was priced in, but also a rise in uh, yields too, 10-year uh, moving up six basis points. You think this could be any sort of safe haven buying perhaps, Brandon, or like, does, is there too much other green out on the screen for you to kind of think that way? Yeah, I mean, at least on my watch list, there's there's quite a bit. Um, I guess with like Nvidia, it's almost just thinking it's like uh, I don't know, it's like Walmart's having a sale, and you can get in on Nvidia at eight forty. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Nine fifty. So, right. I guess that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. <laughs> that Oracle news last night too is probably a little bit of a reminder of. Um, of the pipeline that's out there for these, for some of these names. So that, that, that definitely helped. I mean, the Oracle results themselves weren't particularly good, but I think that caught a lot of people's attention. Um, and I know we're, we're going to be talking about IBM here in a little bit, um, which obviously is uh, seeing a boost from that getting up towards that 200 level. But um, so, I mean, bottom line though, Brandon, just kind of peeling back the onion here. Uh, you definitely still sit in, in the uh, the bullish camp, and therefore, uh, pretty much primarily on the call side of things. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of entering Monday with a, a little bit of a bearish tilt for what felt like the first time in a while, and um, you know, again, I I thought there was going to be some good put opportunities this morning after CPI, and and those are just gone, and you know, again we're just we're looking strong again um so you know as long as these days keep up and uh i don't know i'd say as long as we don't get any surprises but we get those with cpi and yields and i guess it doesn't matter so you know as long as uh things are as green as they are on my watch list i'll try to keep looking for calls all right uh well let's take a look at uh some of the trades that you got out there real quick just getting an alert on netflix which edges up into that 610 area uh popular name with the um with the subs so why don't we just talk about that one real quick i know this isn't one of your calls but uh netflix uh taking a look at that chart brandon what, what are you seeing there yeah, that one's kind of interesting huh? i've got a little bounce right off the 20 day and it almost it's not quite because it's missing it by a few pennies but it was almost in five straight inside days again it, it misses it by a little bit um but going back to march 5th and actually as we speak the top of the mother bar is 610 and we are at just over 610 so yeah, it looks like it's it's probably trying to to break out of that 
consolidation there. So, you know, especially if uh, if Meta remains strong after that little pullback, I, in theory, the communication sector has just been so strong. And, you know, Netflix isn't like super extended from a chart perspective. Um, yeah, if it can close over 610, that might make a interesting call for the rest of the week. Okay, so one th- uh, name that you do have calls on, Vance Micro, AMD. So what was it you saw there? And uh, obviously the overall market action grabbing your attention on that. But uh, was there anything in the charts that was jumping out to you? Yeah, so I was just kind of watching it. And, you know, obviously the move in NVIDIA this morning, um, I don't know, I guess a 40, 50 point move in NVIDIA is just kind of becoming common these days. But it, it was pretty strong. And I just saw AMD kind of creeping up to that 200 level and was kind of thinking, you know, obviously NVIDIA has given the sector a boost. Um, Yeah, again, kind of dipping below that 200 level. Maybe you trap a few bears in there. You create some, you know, FOMO buyers that got out and uh, just kind of started to see it build there and got a little bit of a breakout. And then we got that market pullback, um, you know, on the, hourly chart for me i'm looking at a nice little hammer candle um so you know again i'm kind of hoping that this little market pullback you know a little pullback to the 200 level maybe trap a few more shorts and some fomo buyers and you got a, a technical candle to it on not huge but okay volume and um, working towards a MACD cross on the hourly. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get some continued market strength here. And it's been kind of now testing this 201 level for really the fourth time today. So hoping that uh, just the market strength and, you know, NVIDIA maybe pushing back towards the, the highs of the day. We'll, we'll give it a little boost and, you uh, yeah, up on it uh, a little bit, not a ton right now currently. Um, but so, yeah, just monitoring that and hoping to get a move to like the 205 area. That makes sense. Be uh, the 50 on that 60 minute ch- chart there that we got going on. But uh, OK, so we'll keep an eye out on that. Now, another one that you brought just to um, you got in yesterday, given again what we we're just talking about in terms of the broader price action and some of the weakness that was in you had bought some puts in Microsoft, obviously going against you there, uh, given today's strength, that big pop right around the open for Microsoft there. I'm sure. Uh, that had you scratch in your head, but uh, you, you know, we talked a little bit about the broader price action with that nasty reversal on Friday that kind of kept going on into uh, Monday. Um, what was it in Microsoft that you were seeing and where do you think on hindsight going back, you probably should have jumped out where it was telling you that this trade was uh, going to miss? Yeah, definitely not going to earn an award for a uh, trade of the year on that one. Yeah, um, they, they can't all be winners. Not, not everyone's <laughs> Lenny Dykstra, right? <laughs> he was making some headlines recently. I, I saw something you- about him. I meant to. Uh, I actually meant to send you the article. I can't imagine it was anything good. I, I, I always love going back to uh, him though during the great financial crisis. That was one of the telltale signs, I suppose you could say, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let me try to find the article here. As I, uh, oh, he had a stroke. That's what it was. Unfortunately. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah was so it was too bad to hear. But, um, yeah, I saw that a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately, the first thing I thought of was uh, was you and, and this uh, weekly conversation. So uh, ho- hopefully he's yeah. doing well. <laughs> Better, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, Microsoft, you know, again, I, I kind of entered Monday feeling a little uh, bearish uh, just because of the NVIDIA and the AMD and the, the meta reversals and, you know, Microsoft had been showing some signs of some distribution, um, you know, starting to consolidate a little bit underneath that 20 day. We talked about it before about how it was, you know, pretty close to the 400 level and right below that um, at the time was the 50 day. Uh, the 50 days now actually creeped right up to that 400. So they're, they're one in the same right now. But 
you know, just with a little bit of the market pressure, um, thought that the 400 level was, was in sight and in the morning, um, put in a pretty nice red candle to start the day and then kind of had like a little bit of a, a bear flag, had three, actually four candles in a row with a, a decent sized upper wick. So now you're, you know, you're going, you're going off of the 60 minute here, Brandon, just so oh. I could yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I am yeah. actually on the five minute chart, and okay. I am right at the beginning of uh, the market yesterday. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Just want to make sure that we're showing the charts. Going. Give me a quick second. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah. So right there, you got that big red candle. Yep. Those, those candles right there. Exactly. And, you know, I got that big long upper wick showing some sellers coming in. The market was under pressure. And, you know, when you're right at that 403 level and you've got the 50 day and the 400 there, you know, those have the potential to act as a, as a magnet. And, uh, you know, it started to kind of form a little bit of a quick bear flag, um, jumped on it and, you know, I actually got the, the move down. Um, you know, those next few candles made a nice move down. And that's kind of what you're looking for that, that quick move with, you know, some, some okay timing there on your entry and, uh, just it stalled at 401 and a half. And frankly, I was just a little surprised by that. Um, and then, you know, on the climb up to me, just watching it, it just didn't really seem all that strong. I mean, it's got a nice trend to it, but the underlying um, underlying didn't look too strong to me. And there were a couple of times that some sellers were stepping in and, you know, the market was just weak. And it was kind of one of those where I frankly stared at the computer too long saying, ah, this thing's about to reverse. It's about to reverse. And, you know, it, it just didn't, unfortunately, um, you know, probably should have gotten out of that around the 404 level, um, you know, right tested it. Here, you figure. Yeah. Tested yeah. it once right around 11 o'clock. And then kind of once it started to come back and, and break through. Yeah. That, that, that threw you off. I'm sure. Right. Cause you gave it you gave it that entry price test basically right and then it started coming back down i would have thought that for sure this is breaking down myself yeah and you know and then at that point too i'm kind of just sitting there looking at it where i'm thinking to myself all right i think we might see a slightly hot cpi report but you know i i, I think it will just kind of be a, a reason for them to bring it down real quick and then you know we bounce back up so you know kind of carrying a put overnight um did not seem like the the worst thing and you know again it was kind of below the 20 day and hovering near that 400 level so you know i thought it might have made a pretty good uh you know put opportunity at the open and Clearly, uh, I was I was way off as the the markets just soared. Yeah, yeah, I, I, a lot of people I'm sure got caught up with that. Um, so okay, so uh, what's your plan now with Microsoft? You just planning on eating it and seeing where it goes, or? I would say uh, that move this morning that was, you know, move from 406, 407, all the way up to 414 and a few candles. Well, I was, I don't know, maybe still feeling a little bit like a deer in the headlights trying to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out the uh, market movements. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I might need Microsoft to come out and say uh, their AI tools don't work too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep an eye out for that headline for you, Brandon. But I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be basing uh, my day on it for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've been doing this long Even enough that, uh, that I know true. better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's Microsoft. Um, so they're they're the only two trades you got out there right now. Um, but you do have a number of names on your radar. I mean, I guess they're perpetually on your radar, right? Uh, Nvidia on everybody's radar. Um, so what, what, what's your thought on NVIDIA here? Uh, obviously we were talking about that one being one of the telltale signs from Friday that perhaps things were starting to switch gears. And then all of a sudden we're sit, sitting here just kind of 
uh, watching this bounce back, but not not too fresh all time highs just yet. It is challenging that 900. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking for here in Nvidia, either on the call or put side? Yeah, that 900 level, um, and I think you know, kind of where the candle ends today. Um, you know, if we if we do push into the close here, I mean, there is a good chance that that Nvidia candle could end with no wick at the top. Um, you know, again, we got a couple hours of trading here, so we shall see. But, you know, if it if it does that, I mean, that's kind of a, a bullish move, right? Um, kind of a sign that the, the buying might not be over with. So so let, let, me, let me ask you that, Brandon, because we're, we're, you're talking about just on the daily here, right? On the daily, yep. So it'd be very reminiscent of, I would say, this move on February 22nd, which, as you can see, extended gains early and then reversed and also reminiscent of this move which would have been last thursday right yep so which again pop and reversal here so uh i know you're saying that's a bullish trend it seems like some of the past uh similar candles that looked like that um not quite as bullish i suppose you could argue yeah, yeah. Would, I would, would, I be, would I be off on that assessment? No, no, I, I, I would agree with you. And, you know, I, I think in this particular case, too, if we get a similar setup, um, I think we do need to maybe be careful of some of the longs that got burnt on Friday, um, just because that was such a spike up and move quickly. And I mean, you know, I unfortunately, and hopefully nobody on the call this happened to, but I mean, if you, did buy in on Friday. I mean, you're you're almost 75 points under right now. So, you know, I think very similar setup, and that was a, that's a good catch that you saw. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another gap. And you know, I think we do need to be somewhat cautious of some people that got burned quickly. That you know might kind of get out for a scratch around. You know, call it like the 926 level, uh, the close of the candle on the 7th. So it, it seems to me the setup is simply this. You, you could play that early push if if we do see this close near the highs, which again would be what, around 915 or so? Uh, yeah, like 912 a call. Um, that you, the trade's open to you, but be aware of that possible reversal and just kind of trim and trail accordingly yeah i mean is, is that how you would approach it I, you know i don't think that's the worst setup you know again there's there's always the risk of overnight trades um you know we've got i think more inflation data tomorrow we got retail sales so you know there are things that's, that could the, influence the, rates the ppi and retail sales i think are on thursday right so i think uh, thursday yeah i want to say tomorrow there's a little bit of a breather on the uh, data front, let me just double check that so we could. Oh no, sure. you're, you're you're right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm off by a day. Um, so regardless, with with no reports, you know, anytime yeah. you carry anything overnight, there's always a risk. But you know, just looking at history in that chip that chart setup that you looked at, if that happens again today, and you were to maybe take over. I don't know, the 930, the 940 call on NVIDIA and, you know, you got that gap up in the morning and you, I would probably at least trim trail, you know, maybe roll if it's really looking strong. But, you know, as far as probability setups go, if that comes to fruition the rest of the afternoon, it's, you know, probably not the worst setup out there. That's for sure. And I, take this with a huge grain of salt because there's a ton of risk in doing this every day but frankly if you just bought calls on nvidia at the close of every market day this year, <laughs> you probably haven't done terrible yeah 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 that's uh, that, that's for sure there, there, there's been worse methods out there yeah no there, i mean there really has on um, if you look at nvidia and you know, i talked about this in my notes i mean there's been very, very few times this year where you've had red candles for more than one day. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it just, I, I guess that I had a four day losing streak back in uh, the middle of February. But yeah, no, I mean, it's very rare. You could see the green to red ratio there is yeah, pretty and, high in the green. 
and, and maybe adding in another thing here, going back to my AMD trade, you know, you've got a you've got a inside hammer day candle that's forming. And you know, again, I, I put more stock into a hammer candle if it's at the end of a long trend, but you know, it's pulled back for two days and with this candle and you know, some pretty decent volume today. I mean, it's already showing signs of uh, you know, a potential higher low, really. Um, you know, again, there's to be determined. We can't confirm that yet, but that is one of the signs that we might be putting in a higher low before we go back and start to test the highs again. So now when you're saying an inside day, you're uh, discounting this wick on AMD here. Yeah. So when I, um, personally, I, I usually use just the candle bodies. Body. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. No, no, they're all good. You know, I, I think a lot of traders will do different things and some use the wicks. Um, I, I obviously do pay attention to the wicks because those provide valuable information as well. But I usually use the bodies and I do that with any sort of technical analysis, trend lines, things of that nature. And, you know, from every study I've done, the most important thing is just consistency. You yeah. Know, don't don't use a wick on one candle and a body on another. But. I, right. I you know, otherwise, you probably get into the forcing something to look as you want it to be, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You tend to casually data mining. change that <laughs> angle, and you're like, "Oh, that's a great setup." <laughs> <laughs> Talk yourself into the trade, right? By bending your own rules. Now, that that that, exactly. that, and that that's that's a very important rule out there for everybody to follow. You know, make sure you stick to your methodology, right? Yes. So, so AMD. But no, I, I definitely. Go, go on. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, but I definitely am paying attention to that, to that long lower wick. And, you know, again, those are, those are things that always get me interested because I'm always looking for hammer candles, shooting stars, things of that nature for, you know, potential entry points. So, you know, a long wick and, you know, we're at 50 million shares traded with two hours to go. Um, you know, unless the volume dries up, yeah, again, it looks like that should be on some fairly decent volume, you know, which is something you always look for. You look for the market makers stepping in on high volume and accumulating shares before they let it go higher or lower or be distributing shares if you're looking for lower. Yeah. And next we'll move on to IBM. Um, which is edging up towards that 200 level. Uh, been talking about this one for a while. Got up to 199.18. Uh, I think that makes like an 18-year high or something like that, I want to say. Let me check this. Uh, well, highest level since it hit 206 back in 2013, so an 11-year high. Um, but uh, this was one that's on your radar. Now, obviously, you get that Oracle move. And people start looking for, okay, who could be the next Oracle? IBM obviously fits a lot of bills there. Um, Oracle, before its trade it was, earnings report, was trading at about 18 times for PE. That's where IBM is. Obviously, a long-established tech giant that's got a pretty good track record that's uh, engulfed in this AI craze. And, uh, you know, IBM on the quantum computing side of things too is pretty interesting, but you have this on your radar as well. I assume that Oracle uh, move, I think you even said that in your comment, put this on your radar. Yeah. I mean, really nothing more than that in this case, um, you know, Oracle, nice move. Um, yeah. Again, I, I liked your write up this morning about your, your thoughts on it. Um, you know, they definitely got a little bit of a backlog there. Um, the, the report wasn't quite as, as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Um, definitely an impressive backlog. I just looked at IBM and, you know, when Dell made a nice move a couple weeks ago, IBM, I think, made like a 2% move higher in sympathy. And I just kind of said to myself, well, you know, it did it with Dell. It's got some similarities to Oracle and, you know, it's been a strong company. Um probably not the worst thing to just throw on the radar and made a great, I mean, it would have made a great call if you had just jumped into like the 200 strike. Um, that would yeah. have been a really nice home that, run. That has there. to be the most volume too, I would assume, right? That nice, even psychological number. 
Yep. Two hundreds are about double the volume on all the other strikes. They'll do um, everything to drag it up to that, I would think. Yeah, and there's probably been people that have started in the 195s and rolled up throughout the day as it remained strong. Um, yeah, I mean, this one just, I don't know, sometimes it's best to maybe not overthink the options and just say, I think it's going and just jump in. Um, I got a little sidetracked by the whole CPI thing. So <laughs> by the yeah. time we, you know, was looking at the roller coaster, I was like, oh boy, IBM has moved seven points. I don't want to chase that at this point. Right, right. Yeah, no, I hear you on that one. Um, so uh, what would get it on your radar for play tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, again, there's a possibility of this thing kind of closing with very little wick. And, you know, I, I think at this point it's probably worth throwing on the radar because it's pretty close to that 200 level. Yeah. And, you know, again, I would say as long as the market remains strong, that that 200 level is probably going to act like a magnet. And, you know, we do have um, the monthly option expiration coming up. And like you just said, the 200 is the most heavily traded contract. Um, you know, again, that could be a pretty reasonable spot to get pinned. And if you can get in, you know, at the 197 level and it does move to the 200, you're probably going to end up with a pretty decent little call trade. All right. Uh, analog devices, ADI, another name that you had on your radar, uh, making a nice push here. It's a beautiful looking chart written, ready to break out of, above that 200 level itself. So um, was it? did you just do a search for stocks trading near its 200 level? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you do that, you get about a thousand names. These days, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Everything's trading around 200, it feels like inflation. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this one's actually surprising. Well, surprising me and not surprising me today. So um, this is actually one that I look at on a regular basis. Uh, just don't trade it because I tend to gravitate towards AMD and NVIDIA. And what caught my attention yesterday was during the sell-off, I mean, it outperformed the SMH by 3%. So, you know, pretty good outperformance. And it was also green for the day, which, you know, not a lot of the semiconductors were. And like you said, it's, it's a nice looking chart. It's been building. And what's really kind of catching my attention um, is on the weekly chart. If you look back, starting on the week of December 11th, you got the real nice move higher. I, I want to say that I'm, I'm assuming that might have been earnings week based upon that move. I'm, I'm not one. Yeah, I would. I would think. Right. Well, yeah, it, I, I used to be able to plot earnings on this and it never does it anymore. So it's quite annoying. But yeah, that that definitely has the look of a earnings breakout for sure. Yeah. So I was just looking at that and it's actually had basically inside weeks um, since then. And it just continues to build and build. And, you know, at this point, it's so close to um, the top of the, the mother bar, which is the close is uh, right under 201, that at this point, you would imagine that it would at least go up and test that level. Um, so, you know, again, I, I think it's got some opportunity to make a move higher. And then I kind of was thinking, all right, well, this thing did well yesterday. If the semis come back today, then, you know, it should do real well. I think all the flows are going to NVIDIA and, and AMD and the others, though, and it's just getting left behind. Um, so, you know, just a little bit of a flip-flop day, but I think it's a constructive chart, and I think it's worth watching. It is pretty thinly traded on the, uh, the options front, though. Okay, and then uh, you got Meta platforms here i know it's a popular one for you to trade uh, obviously trying to get over that 500 level finding a little bit of resistance there but holding that 20 uh day moving average that's for sure yeah i actually thought that this again uh you know i put this in my notes with the the asterisk that if nvidia was under pressure um i thought it was going to again, create a pretty good put opportunity because it had actually followed, um, you know, Meta pretty, or excuse me, it had followed NVIDIA on Friday through that downturn and yesterday too. So, 
kind of had a little bit of that temporary ugliness on the chart. And, uh, you know, again, if NVIDIA took another leg lower, it just seemed like it would move in sympathy. But, uh, you know, again, <laughs> here we are back in the green. So maybe forget that idea for the day. Um, you know, I'm, I'm watching it right now, actually, and just made a slightly higher low for the day. Um, you know, has seen a little bit of volume coming in here. Um, actually, it was more like uh, right towards the end of the lunch hour. So kind of playing around that 495 level. And, uh, you know, I think this one's, again, if the market remains strong, might be worth watching for a uh, move up to the 500 level by the close. And then a uh, stock that's been making a little bit of a comeback as of late, Google, um, obviously had been somewhat left for dead, bouncing off that 200 uh, level. Coming down, though, number one, it's got to get through the 20. That also uh, kind of adds on for a little bit of downward trend resistance if you're going off the 153 level from uh, January 29th. So what is it that you're looking for in Google here? And, um, you know, where do you see the risk levels and uh, where would you put reward levels at? Yeah, so Google, um, yeah, again, it, it has been under pressure, made a nice move and bucked the trend yesterday, uh, really did the opposite of, of Meta. And yeah, again, this was kind of in conjunction with if Meta had come under pressure, um, you know, and followed NVIDIA lower. Um, kind of just made Google feel like it might be a uh, pullback short candidate. You know, it's been trending lower, went down and tested that 200 day. And, you know, on the climb up, um, you know, on the eighth in particular, got a pretty long upper wick showing some sellers still out there. Uh, rejected right off the 20 day yesterday with another upper wick. And, you know, again, if, if the sector came under pressure, it just felt like a, a candidate to get rejected off of that 20 day and, and maybe continue to, to make a trend lower. But um, yeah, again, just the, the market strength out there, it's, it's pulling higher. And I mean, it's literally sitting almost to the penny at the 20 day right now. So it's kind of had a little bit of a funky chart intraday as it's just kind of chopped around. So yeah, I mean, if if it can break through that, you know, again, I think the 140 and the 50 days in sight. But um, if big if the market does return to selling and it rejects off that 20 day, it could make a nice little uh, short term put candidate, you'd think. All right. So we'll keep an eye out on that. See if you got any entries there. Just circling back before we get into our next topic to the markets got the s p um holding tight near session highs up around 52 32 at the moment nasdaq uh, up nearly one percent uh the nasdaq itself that is also near those session highs they're starting to see some wicks up at the top here brandon but uh, we continue to stair step our way up there anyway uh but you, you know buying going on at the moment so not a lot of changes to the broader market so let's circle back and today in the options playbook we're going to talk a little bit about the bear put spread so uh, why don't you break this down for us brandon and tell us what we're trying to accomplish if we are uh dabbling in a bear put spread yeah and no, just real quick before that if i can just jump into two more ideas um, that weren't on uh, my notes but have caught my attention People um, love ideas, so certainly. So uh, one, and stealing a little bit from Damon here and uh, this morning, is uh, AI. AI. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, that's had a little bit of a pullback here uh, from earnings. It's gone and filled that post-earnings gap. Uh, made a move below both the 20 and the 200 day. So, you know, again, that can be signs of, of them trapping some people. And, you know, as it pushes higher here, uh, looks like, again, we got some trading to go, but, you know, looks like it's in line to maybe uh, form a little bit of a, a hammer candle here. So, you know, again, just a, a couple different technical things that you got the earnings gap filled. You've, 
you know, dip below two major moving averages and you've been able to, to fight back through them. And, uh, you know, there's also some not huge, but some halfway decent volume coming into it. So keeping an eye on that. And, uh, yeah, a little surprised that it's, it's in the red today with everything else. So, um, I think it's a potential interesting, uh, you know, afternoon, maybe squeeze candidate and for maybe the rest of the week. All right. Um, and the other one, and this is under pressure too, and, you know, from an options or even just a stock perspective, this uh, isn't always for the uh, the faint of heart here, but uh, Palantir. Um, yeah, this is this is definitely coming under some pressure today. Well, all the other names are in the green, but uh, kind of playing right around that that 20 day. So, you know, you had a nice move higher. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a maybe a pullback long candidate here and just kind of keeping an eye on that that 20 day. Um, I actually did have a, a friend who listened to their uh, was like AIP con conference the other day, and uh, she said it was phenomenal. Uh, you know, again, I'm more of a it's, it's, guy. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a nice product, but, uh, you know, from all intent and purposes, from what I've seen, for sure. Yeah, she she said she was uh, she was very very impressed with that. Again, I I barely pay attention to fundamentals because I'm a I'm a chart guy. But you know, I know that this has kind of been a name that's been uh, catching a little bit more attention here in the AI world. I know they've won some good contracts lately, and uh, you know, just kind of playing around that major moving average. This just you know, down three and a half percent on a, a day like this with the market just seems like maybe a little bit of a afternoon squeeze candidate. Um, you know, from an options perspective, the options usually run pretty on the high side just because, you know, this tends to get in with the, the Reddit crowd and can be pretty volatile. Um, but definitely one I'm going to watch here into the close. All right. So some, some more names for us. Uh there and if you, if you were to play it what would your targets be on palantir um you know something like that's usually in my oh, i don't want to say simple but you know kind of like every 50 cents you know yeah. 20 25 you know 25 and a half um you know obviously there's going to be some other nuances in there but those tend to be pretty good just targets and i mean that's that's how the uh, the option chain works too. So every every fifty cents you've got to strike until you get north of uh, thirty one. Okay. All right. Any other names out there that you wanted to uh, touch upon? No, I think uh, I think that's probably uh, plenty of ideas for one day for everybody. Okay. No. No. That's that's good. People people like to hear other folks talking through stocks that they want to trade and you tend to have your finger on the pulse for some of the more uh, better traders out there so uh good information there and uh, much appreciated by the subs i know that much uh well let's circle back then to the options playbook and uh today we're going to talk a little bit about the bear put spread brandon so why don't you give us some of the basics of uh, when somebody would want to use a bear put spread and uh, what are some of the actions they would need to take? Yeah. So uh, it's funny, you know, in the, in the past we had discussed the bull call and bear call spreads. And like you said, today's bear put spreads. And I wrote this over the weekend and you know, with NVIDIA and AMD, I was like, Oh, well, maybe it's time for a, uh, a hedging strategy. And, uh, you well, know, we, we, we've been doing hedging. <laughs> Hey, we're not. You don't have to put them on, but if you, you know it's always good to have them out there as, as something to fall back on, right? Yeah, and and you know, like anything with these conversations, sometimes they're very timely. Sometimes the timing's a little off. I mean, like we've talked about, it's it's for conversation purposes, and some people will love the idea and go and research more, and you know, others will will not use it, and you know, that's that's kind of the whole reason behind it. But it was funny. I was like, boy, this seems very timely. <laughs> this morning, I'm like, all right, well, NVIDIA is up 5%. So right. <laughs> let's yeah. not hedge. The, the best laid plans, as they say, right? Yeah. So, um, but anyway, um, so these are implemented to profit from a decline in the underlying stock and consist of one long put with a higher strike 
and one short put with a lower strike price. So I would say that uh, most out there would consider this strategy for a case where you expect a gradual decline or if you are moderately bearish. Um, so this is a net debit strategy versus net credit. So there is going to be a cost and the funds will be debited from your account. So I think really the easiest way to think about this is really it's just a method of reducing capital requirements of just buying an outright put because you're also writing a contract to offset the cost. So similar to the other spread strategies that we've talked about, this helps reduce your capital required. It does reduce your risk, but at the same time, it's also going to limit your gains. All right. So um, I know that you were, uh, so reduces risks, limits, limits your gains. Um, it's net de debit strategy, right? Correct. So you're going to see money uh, flowing out of your accounts. Um, and it, primarily you're putting this on. Uh, would you view it as getting a little bit more leverage in terms of reducing your capital requirements? It, you would. And yeah, I guess you technically increase your leverage too because you're using you know options versus your your straight equity um again the the buying and the selling will will offset those but yeah just like you said i mean you know you've got your outright put strategy that's going to cost you you know whatever the particular contract is times however many you buy and in this case it's simple enough you're just you're just really reducing some of those costs that is okay. the easiest way to think about it so, I mean, a few of the names that we've talked about here today, um, you, you know, you came into this week a little bit more bearish. Uh, today's price action has thrown that into a little bit of disarray. But, um, you know, AMD, for example, well, why don't we use that and talk a little bit about how you would implement this bear put spread on uh, AMD? Yeah, so... Um... Before giving the example, I'll just kind of walk you through the what I'm going to give as an example. So your your profit is is limited if if the stock price falls below the strike price of the short put, the lower strike, and the potential loss is limited if the stock price rises above the strike price of the long put. So AMD, I, I did this example um, last night using the, the close prices of the options uh, from yesterday's market close. So um, just these numbers are, are, are going to be off. And it, in hindsight, for me, probably bad to give a bear strategy on AMD as I open calls. But on my drop down menu, AMD is at the top of my list. So <laughs> it, it was easy enough for me to just go to the option chain. Uh, it, it, it makes sense, too. I mean, perhaps somebody bought amd stock off of your um commentary and just wanted to have a little bit of protection so so it, it, it could work in there yeah no absolutely so um example on amd so if you take the 200 put it was at uh, six dollars per contract and the 195 put was at 360 and again this is at the close of yesterday so your net cost is going to be 240. You know, so again, like we just talked about, if you were just buying the, the outright put, it's going to cost you six bucks per contract, but you are offsetting that cost by also um, writing a put at the same time. So the, the good thing about, you know, any spread trade is, is, you know, your risk at the time of entry, and it's defined in this case as the net debit. So $2 and 40 cents, that's your risk. And your max profit potential is the spread width minus the premium paid. So you got the 200 strike minus the 195 strike. You've got a five point spread. Your cost is 240. So five point spread minus 240. Your max profit equals $2.60. Um, so your max profit is realized if the stock price is at or below the strike price of the short put, the lower strike at expiration. Okay. So, uh, again, use the example, AMD 200 puts, uh, there were $6 yesterday, the 195 puts 
we're 360 so your cost again two dollars and 40 cents uh and then uh, as you had said uh you know the risk at time of entry is it's defined by the net debit or the two dollars and 40 cents in this case uh your max profit potential that's the spread minus the premium paid right so that would be 200 minus 195 which is the five point spread and uh cost is 240 so your max profit equals 260. so i suppose if i was looking at this from a risk reward basis i see my net profit at 260 and my net loss at 240 um, which doesn't seem like a great risk reward um for me uh so how would i i know you said that profits are limited um but uh you know even if i was a little cautious in amd um what would be you know the biggest benefit of me doing this if, if i'm right that i'm able to kind of scrape off a little bit off the top there basically is that how you see it brand yeah i mean or am i just looking at it wrong no i mean you're your biggest benefit in this case is, you know, if you are slightly bearish on AMD and you don't want to do the the six dollar outlay for the put outright, this would be a way to to minimize that. So, you know, let's let's say we're just going into today and you know we're we're bearish on on AMD. Um, again, you can go and you can just buy the the put outright, but if if you want to minimize that risk and you do want to get some sort of short exposure, that's where the, the writing the contract and reducing that risk comes in. So I, okay, I see so what you're saying. Sense. And I didn't even realize the, the, the equal uh, risk return there. Um, you know, I, I, but, but, I you, but, but it does minimize your risk on the $6 on the $6 put at the 200. Correct. So, so basically, you know, if, if we entered into today and we said, all right, we're, we're bearish on, on AMD and I want to go and buy an outright put, but if you lose on that, you're going to lose your whole six bucks. It, and that would be if you just let it ride and, and you didn't get out of it. Um, so in this case, if you did the, the spread trade, you, you've reduced your, your capital outlay. So basically if you're wrong then you're wrong for less money <laughs> that's yeah. that's really kind of the, the benefit of it right right no no that that makes sense um so okay no uh, that that that's good that's good to know i mean this is obviously something that with a lot of people concerned about the market tops coming in but in an upward trend where they don't want to be losing their shirt trying to short things that it's something like this makes perfect examples perfect sense right because for instance if you did open this up on monday just for argument's sake right um it, you, you know instead of losing the six dollars there you would have just simply been losing the 240 per contract yeah, that, that's a that's a great way to think about it. Of just getting that little protection on the on the move higher. Um, you know, as we reach new levels, if we're going to have any sort of pullback, and you know, again, just no pun intended, spreading out your risk. Yeah, you know, let's just say you had you know enough to to spend on this the six dollars um, to open contracts. What you could do here is all right, you know. I'm, I'm moderately bearish on AMD. I just want a little bit of protection. Um, if I'm wrong, I don't want to, you know, lose my whole capital that's in my account. You know, you could go and do the spread trade. You provide a little protection. And then on the, the flip side, you've still got half of your capital where, you know, you know, maybe you go long a call or maybe you just let it sit there in cash. But, you know, you, again, you're, you're basically just kind of spreading around your risk and your capital. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. Now that 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 makes sense. That's a good strategy for us to uh, keep on the table here, especially given the backdrop that we're in. So, anything else on this strategy, Brandon, that you wanted to bring up? Yeah, just a couple more points here real sure. quick. Um, so the closer that the strikes are to the price, the more it costs, but the higher the probability it is profitable. 
um, the larger the spread width between the long and short put, the more it will cost and the more that you can make in, in theory. Um, so there are some calculators out there. Um, I've always used the one at Fidelity um, that allow you to basically plug in the different strikes and, you know, they've got some great calculators that will, you know, basically show you, you know, what your debit is going to be. So again, you know, your risk going into it. And then, you know, depending on how much risk return you're looking for, how big of a, you know, if, if you think that AMD is going to, you know, absolutely plummet, um, I'd probably argue you just buy a straight put, but, um, you know, basically, depending on how big of a move you think the stock might make, um, you know, you can adjust your strikes accordingly and, you know, that will change your your risk reward. Um, you know, I'd maybe caution if you look at them. I, I remember when I first started trading, I was like, oh, well, if I, you know, do the 200 strike and then I look at the, you know, <laughs> the 50 strike it's like oh wow my risk return this is great and it's like well i, I suppose too if you're a, a long holder in amd and you just want to kind of ease some of the pain if it did pull back this would be another strategy for you to do that right uh, you, this would be another strategy or you know like we talked about a, a few times covered um calls. you know the, the covered calls yeah yeah yeah, no. So, okay. Well, hey, the more the more ammo you could give to uh, people to use out there, the better, right? Especially if you're trying to get into a nuanced call there. Yes, um, exactly. And uh, the the only other thing I'd say, and I I kind of just mentioned this, is yeah. Again, you can you can tell when I when I wrote this. Um, you know, if you thought Friday's fade was the top of the market, and you you thought that we were you know going to be due for a five to ten percent correction, let's call it. You know, you might consider straight puts versus this strategy. Um, you know, again, most people would probably say this is for a gradual decline. Um, you know. Personally, if I was looking at NVIDIA on Friday and, you know, I saw that that drop coming, I probably wouldn't have done a spread trade personally just because it moved so quickly. And you would have um, again, you would have minimized your risk. You would have minimized your capital. But at the same time, especially on a big move like that, these spread trades will limit your gains. So, you know, that's that's one of the downsides of them. OK. All right, Brandon, anything else on this front then that you wanted to touch upon? No, I think uh, I think we got it pretty well covered. All right. Well, with that then, uh, markets have continued to drift higher. So this uh, bear put spread, not, <laughs> not, not looking like something we want to implement at the moment, given uh, <laughs> the, the bulls on parade. But hey, no, Brandon, I mean, look, there's a lot of opportunity to implement something like this. So this is a great tool to uh, lend out to everybody there. Uh, obviously, if anybody's got any further questions on that, definitely feel free to um, write in. Uh, me or Brandon would be happy to answer any questions there and, uh, you know, kind of just fill out some more blanks on this. But I uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Brandon to introduce this to us and we'll keep an eye out for um, for any opportunities to use it or if we see you out there using it. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it, Gavin. All right. Take care, Brandon. All Thank right, you. everybody. We're just going to shut down audio for a momentary for a minute here uh, and load it back up and I should have the replay of the options playbook up shortly. <laughs> 